Hi, it's Lena, and I'm pretty sure that given the current situation, a lot of us are watching more Netflix than before, so I figured now was a good time to make another one of these videos. This is the third one that I'm making with 10 Netflix suggestions. So now there's a total of 30 Netflix suggestions on my channel. So if you want even more ideas on what to watch, I'll leave those two videos linked down below for you if you wanna check them out after this one. And I know I wanted to keep this intro kind of short, but I really need to say this. So, as I've said in my other videos, all of the TV shows and movies that I'm recommending are currently on the Canadian Netflix. If they're not available in your country's Netflix, then I'm sorry, I'm in Canada and it's currently April 2020, so it's possible they're not available in your location or they've been taken off depending on when you're watching this. Okay, now we can get started. Forget your troubles. The first thing I'm recommending is a TV show called Dead to Me, and it's a comedy, but it's also kind of dramatic, so... I guess dramedy is the right term for it and it's about this woman, Jen, whose husband gets killed in a hit and run. So she ends up going to this grief support group and she meets this other woman named Judy there who's also going through a loss of her own and they kind of end up bonding and becoming friends over that. But they have really different personalities which makes for a really interesting kind of funny dynamic between them. And as the episodes go on, we find out that Judy has a really big, dark secret, which obviously I'm not gonna spoil here, that's for you to find out, but it's super interesting how she tries to keep Jen from finding out about it. And as the episodes go on, there's more plot twists and the season finale was really good. So I definitely recommend watching it. The next thing I'm recommending is also a TV show and it's called The Society. I really like it. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's this mystery teen drama where basically all of these teens are meant to be going on this school field trip, camping trip kind of thing, but there is a storm so they're forced to come back. The school buses drop them off and then they leave but they find out that things are a little bit different. It seems like everyone that wasn't on those buses has absolutely disappeared from the town. So they're the only ones left, just these teens, no adults. So it turns into this kind of modern Lord of the Flies situation. So they have to figure out how to survive, how to make rules for this new society and figure out what the heck is going on. There's a lot of theories out there about whether it's like a different dimension or the afterlife or a government experiment or something. No one really knows, which is what makes it so interesting. So definitely, definitely recommend it. It has a great cast. The script is really good. And I would personally say it's not like your typical teen drama, if that makes sense. I don't know, it's just really good. Welcome to Nerve. Number three is a movie called Nerve. It's with Emma Roberts and Dave Franco. And it's one of those movies that's just kind of a fun action watch. Basically, there's this game called Nerve, like the title of the movie. And in the game, there are watchers and there are players. So watchers pay to watch and players must complete dares to get money, followers, and move up in the ranks. And if you don't complete a dare, then you're eliminated from the game. One of the main characters is a girl named V who is usually pretty reserved and safe, but one of her friends kind of peer pressures her into joining the game as a player. And during the game, she meets another player named Ian and the watchers really like their dynamic, so they want them to complete a bunch of dares together. It starts off with simpler dares and as the movie goes on, they get more intense and even dangerous. And we find out how screwed up the game really is and I'll leave it at that. The next suggestion is a TV show called The Umbrella Academy. The premise is that back in 1989, on the exact same day, 43 women randomly give birth, even though none of those women had been pregnant when the day first started. First of all, if I was one of those women, that's <laughs> kind of spooky, but that's not the point. The point is there's this billionaire that is super intrigued by this whole phenomenon and he ends up adopting seven of those kids. And because they're born from this weird thing, most of them have some sort of superpower. And it's cool because it's not your typical superpowers like flying or super speed or whatever. They're a little bit different and I'll let you find that out for yourself but this billionaire kind of trains them to save the world or something. But as they grow older, they kind of grow apart from one another and they only come back together when this billionaire father figure dies 
Um, so they come back for his funeral and they actually have to end up working together because there seems to be some sort of mystery around his death. And on top of that, apparently the apocalypse is coming soon. So that's great for them. I, I think it's really great because it's not your typical comic superhero type show. So I definitely recommend it. This next one I wasn't expecting to enjoy as much as I did, but it was surprising in a good way. It's a six part documentary series called Cheer. It follows the Navarro College cheer team from Texas who are apparently really well known in the cheerleading world. And through the six episodes, you get to follow them as they train to try to win the national cheerleading championship. And you also get to know about their backstories and how they got to where they were. I think it breaks a lot of the stereotypes around cheerleading and shows a totally different side to it. It shows you how athletic you really have to be to be a cheerleader. I mean, some of the things these people do are absolutely insane to me. They're so fearless and it just shows you how much work really goes into a cheerleading routine. So yeah, definitely not your stereotypical cheerleading show. Number six is a movie titled Ready Player One, directed by the one and only Steven Spielberg. It is a sci-fi adventure movie set in the future where the majority of people use this virtual reality software thing called Oasis as an attempt to escape their dull reality. And while you're in the Oasis, you can basically be whoever you want to be. But when the creator of the game passes away, there is a quest to win a bunch of money, but more importantly, to win control of the whole oasis. So the movie is centered around this orphan teenager named Wade who tries to win this quest. So he tries to find clues and he gets some allies and so on. But obviously the oasis is more than just a game. Basically the whole population is hooked up to it. So. There's this owner of a big corporation trying to gain control of it instead of Wade, and that is the premise of the movie. The next thing I'm recommending is a TV show called Glow, and this one is for more mature audiences. I know most of the people that watch me are between 18 to 24 just based on my analytics, but I know that there's also some people that are on the much younger side of things, so if that's you, maybe stay away from this one because it does have some nudity and it deals with some more mature subject matter kind of thing. But anyways, the show is set in the 1980s and it starts by following this actress, Ruth, who is continuously going to auditions and trying to make her dream come true, but she's had no luck. So she ends up trying out for this alternative project, which actually turns out to be a women's wrestling show. And it's titled The Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, AKA Glow. And here she meets some of the other Hollywood misfits, I guess. And it's about them training and trying to get the show made. But it also deals with issues like racism and like equal pay and homophobia and etc. It's just a really well written script. And based on the premise of the show, I honestly didn't think I was going to like it that much, but it surprised me. So definitely give it a chance. If you're in the mood for a romantic drama, then I definitely recommend watching The Age of Adeline. It's with Blake Lively and Harrison Ford, and it revolves around Blake Lively's character, Adeline, who way back when she got married, she had a daughter, and then lost her husband in a tragic accident. But then she ends up getting into an accident of her own back in the late 1930s. And after this, she no longer ages at all. She's just stuck at 29 years old. And the only person that knows this secret about her is her daughter. It's kind of weird because her daughter looks like an elderly woman and she still looks 29. But anyways, in fear of being found out and becoming some sort of experiment, she has to constantly change her identity and she has to sacrifice a lot in the process and that includes sacrificing love slash relationships. But she ends up meeting this guy and she falls for him and then there's a bit of a plot twist which I'll let you find out for yourself. The next suggestion is a TV show called How to Get Away with Murder. And full disclosure, for everything else that I've recommended, I've watched the whole thing. But for this one, I've only seen the first two seasons, so I'm hoping the rest of it is also good. 
It's about this really well-known criminal defense lawyer, Annalise Keating, who takes five of her law students to intern at her firm. So we see how far they'll go to do well in her class and keep up with her standards at the firm. And at some point, they end up getting involved with an actual murder. And it goes back and forth in flashbacks of them trying to cover up the murder. And sometimes I feel like too many flashbacks can take away from a story, but in this case, I found that it was really well done and it made it more interesting to unravel the plot that way. And the last thing I'm recommending, I'm sure a lot of you know about it, but I recently saw that it was actually on Netflix, so I had to add it to this list, and that is La La Land. It is definitely one of my favorite movies, and it was nominated for so many Oscars, so trust me, it's really good. It's about this aspiring actress, Mia, trying to make it in Hollywood, and she meets this guy, Sebastian, who is also chasing his dream, but he wants to be a musician, and they kind of bond over wanting to be a successful artist, and I think that they understand each other in many ways and it's their love story but also about them trying to make their dreams come true together and about how their own dreams seem to kind of pull them apart from each other at times. The visual aesthetics of this movie are so so pleasing and the music is so pretty and the script is good and the acting is good. Everything about it is just so well done so I definitely recommend that you watch it. And those are all the suggestions I'm giving you in this video. Again, I have two other videos like this one. I'll have them linked down below if you want even more suggestions on what to watch. But that is it for this one. If you did like it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, and hopefully I'll catch you in my next video.